Drum Director is a fully tweakable loop player, step sequencer, effects unit, and overall it's a great way to add live drum sounds into your DAW. Over the next few weeks, we here at the Loop Loft will be looking under the hood at some of the features and workflows you can take advantage of when using the Drum Director instrument. Today we're going to use Drum Director in Ableton to add some grooves over a sample and a bass line. And we'll take this time to look at the main page of the program and show how to use the loop filter, groups, and macros to program your sequences. So first, let's take a look at the Drum Director tool you'll see that it loads up in Contact Player. If you don't own the full version of Contact, Contact Player is available for free and can be used to load up and use the full version of Drum Director and all of its tools. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is assign a sample to a pad that we're going to use as our main groove. That will be right on pad one. Um, so you click on a pad to activate it. That pad will loop indefinitely. And what we can do is use the loop select tool to select a sample to play from. Now, if you notice, you're only seeing uh, samples from our crate dig collection. I'm going to be using this sample here. Um, but that's only because we have this loop filter set up that way. So the loop filter is a way to organize our library based on which you want it to dial in on. You can either organize samples that are just in specific sample kits or you can organize your library by sounds. In this case, we have kick drums, snare drums, etc., etc. Now, one thing that I should note, we write in the tempos and the file names for all of our looped samples. But if you notice, we're going to be using something that's 102 BPMs, but our tempo is 84. And you can do this pretty easily in Drum Director because enabling sync allows Drum Director to follow the tempo of your DAW. So, Let's actually fire off this first MIDI note. The first pad is assigned to C1. And you'll actually hear this follow tempo if I jump up. Okay. So let's bring that back up to 84. And I should note, this is a really good way to incorporate Ableton style warping into your DAW if you're using Pro Tools or something like that. Now, if we wanted that sample to play off as a one shot, a disengaging loop would do that. And the hold and decay. also really useful for the one-shot samples. This is what keeps them from looping over and over again in your DAW. Pads two through four have some fills and some loops that we've loaded in from the browser, but I want to customize the sound on them a little bit more. In order to do that, we're going to use the modifiers section and the filter and bit crush section to the side of the pads here. So let's just take a listen at these. <laughs> So right out of the bat, the first thing I'm going to do to this one is add a bit of a high pass filter. And I'm doing that for all of these samples because since they're being used as fills, I want them to have less energy than the main riff. So every time we have one of these fills pop in, all that energy pops back in when your main groove hits. All right, we can do some additional things to add some variation. Give it a bit closer. A bit of resonance. One last thing that I want to do just to give everything a more humanized feel is play with some of the random tools. Now we have a random panning tool and a random tuning tool. Okay, 
so let's just start to add some randomization to all of these. Finally, what I want to do is take advantage of some of the one hits that we have in Drum Director. So on pads 5 through 8, we have some one hits loaded up. But if you recall how all the pads interact with each other, they cut each other off. So if I'm playing this groove and I trigger off one of these hi-hats, Going to cut off the rest of the groove so what we want to do is adjust the group of these hats now groups are a way to categorize the different samples and hits into sections and any samples that are in the same group will cut each other off so for pads five and six since they're an open and closed hi-hat we want to put them on their own unique group so let's just click two here for each of these and now they cut each other off but don't interrupt the rest of the sequence. So if you want to add a repeating roll, for example, something that's a bit more static and straightforward on this beat. actually filter some more high out of that. Get crush it a bit. Pan it. Do a bit of the same for the closed hat, but we're gonna separate the panning the other way. And we'll give both of those some of that random panning and tuning that we had to. kind of an old school hardware sampler trick. Pad seven and eight have the same sound on them. I'm going to adjust the pitch on one. Give that one stop and attack on this one. Real nice way of getting two different tones to respond to each other that kind of have the same frequency content. We kept the mutes on, and that's why you hear that cutoff. Let's put those on their own group three.
hopefully this gives you a basic overview on how the main page or drum director works. In the next video, we'll move over to Pro Tools and talk a bit about the native sequencer, the multi-track outputs that allow you to send different pads to different channels, and the built-in effects that can be automated fully in Drum Director. Until next time, take care and make some good music. Peace.